Good afternoon, everybody, or good evening. I hope you all had a great Labor Day. Uh, I'm here to show you, I guess, um, a little bit about how I use the internet. And um, um, yeah, so let's get started. This is what um, my top tabs pretty much look like. I have my MyQ page, email, Blackboard, and get to my first source. We're going to get to the Washington Post. Um, when I get up in the morning, this is pretty much the first website I go to. Um, I have all my headlines here. As you can see, Kentucky Clerk. I think it's great. I, I just always found it a very reliable source. Um, has a lot of strength. It's a reputable source. Um, you know, it has your po your political, world, national, everything. You can go to sports, but you know, I get my sports news elsewhere. Um, a lot of times, I think it's um, very informative. You know, it has video stories, like mini packages. Um, you know, I think it's just great. I mean, it has local news, but, you know, I'm not worried about the local news. Um, you know, mostly I just go here for political, world news, national news, and just, you know, basic general news, science news, as you can see right here. Um, we'll just click that. We'll see what this is. Uh, stunning images from space. Mm, look at that. Thor's helmet in Canis Major. Canis Major, that's serious. Brightest star in the sky. Quite interesting. Um, yeah, it has a little slideshow. You know, I think Washington Post does a great job, you know, as far as it going into the multimedia age. Um, it has videos. Um, let me just get rid of this. It has videos, uh, pictures, from photo galleries. Sometimes it has, like, you know... Um, little segments from podcasts. I think it's really great. So we're going to go back to uh, the home page. And uh, yeah, and I always use as a backup reference, I always do google.com if I want to get more information about a story. So let's say you see Washington Post. Um, you know, let's go with the, uh, the migration crisis and uh, <sighs> that's going on in Germany. Type in migration crisis. Go to news, and I can, you know, I can go to, you know, you know, well, well, Germany to be specific. Um, you know, the Hungary, Austria, you know, I got CNN if I want a uh, nice little uh, video package on it, news package. Um, so I always, I always go here. I always revert back to Google. No matter what source of news I use, I always go back to Google. I double check everything. I also like the Guardian a lot. Um, they have some interesting stories on their times. The thing that you have to be interest, um, you have to be careful though, is when you double check with Google. From what I've noticed, is you'll see, you know, you'll see some publications that I've never really heard of before. You know, so you know, if we just type in migration, um, you know, some things that I've never heard of, like Sputnik International. Uh, let's see what this is. So it's different different news sources. You know, you don't know if they're reliable all the time. So that's the only thing you have to be careful with Google about. Um, otherwise, you know, I'd go to Yahoo News if I really cared about a story. I'd go to Time. Um, I wouldn't check out Hastings Tribune. Maybe for the photographs because this is probably a slideshow. I'd probably go and ch maybe check this out. But if it's a regular typed story, I wouldn't read over it. I wouldn't even bother. So, um, yeah, so that's... Uh, that's pretty much how I deal with my Washington Post. I think it's great. And, um, you know, I think it's the perfect amount of information. It's not too much of an overload. It's it's laid out in a very friendly manner where you could look at the headlines as if you're reading a newspaper. And I think they did a great job of doing that. So for sports, I am a huge sports fan. Um, I can't be a sports journalist because I'm way too much of a fan. So, unfortunately. But um, I always go to ESPN.com. Um, I like the little interface they have at the top. You have your leagues up here, you know, your big four, uh, NFL, you can just go here, click on the team. I'm actually a Washington Redskins fan. So I'll click on the Redskins and we see here, you know, reality bite. Okay. And if the reality bites is cornerback, uh, one thing I really do like about ESPN is as you can see, you roll down, you read an article, you read an article when it comes to the end of an article, another article automatically loads which i think is just fantastic i think it's uh i think it's a great way to i guess usher in the new age of news and how it should be um any related news story will just be it'll, it'll just keep going on forever as you can see 
it, uh, it just keeps going on, different stories. Um, I think this is fantastic. I think more news publications, especially when they're talking about similar stories, I think they should use, um, I guess, this interface that ESPN has with um, with retrieving stories. But I really like how everything's just laid out. Uh, you know, you can look at your depth charts, you can look at your transactions, roster, schedule, stats, everything. It's very, very user friendly, which I like. I think that's most important. You know, I go to baseball, as you can tell but in uh, in the background, I am a Mets fan. You know, same deal, has the uh, nice little uh, standings on the side. Last record, we actually won today, which is great. So I'm happy about that, first place, can't argue with that. But, you know, so, you know, has the team leaders, you know, everything you need to have, you know, to be well informed about your sports team. I think it's great. You, know, you have your score box on the top, full scoreboard. It's a very easy interface, you know, which which I think is great. And just like just like anything else, if I read something, you know, read something here, you know, let's say um, about Daniel Murphy and his uh, DL injury, you know, go ahead from here, Daniel Murphy, and you know, have all my uh, all my information. You know, returning to lineup, everything, have my uh, reliable sources. So if I want to go anywhere else, um, I divert back. But, you know, pretty much how I see it is just like the Washington Post. My main base would be, for sports at least, would be ESPN. As I told you before, I'm not a big fan of social media. I am not well informed as far as social media is concerned. Um, I would like to be at a professional standpoint, but for right now, I don't, I don't, I don't find it necessary, you know. Um, all the friends I talk to, I have their phone numbers, so I don't need to. In my opinion, you know, for, as far as information goes, I think I think I have no problem gathering information this way. Um, but yeah, so let's move on. Um, I also like reading the Huffington Post. I think Ariana Huffington is really great. You know, I I love I love the contributors. You know, there's you know there's not just you know regular journalists. They'll have like guest guest writers, and I think it's I think it's just really cool. So we'll just uh, we'll pick a topic here. We'll go to um, go entertainment. You know, it has a nice little layout at the top. Uh, one thing that I do not like about the Huffington Post, I think it's great. I think everything on here is fantastic. I love reading about it. We'll just click on a random story. Uh, teen who texted mom, "I'm scared, found dead." Okay, it's a crime story, um, which is also nice because it has suggestions on the side screen. Um, that might not pertain to, you know, crime. So we're in the crime section. Let's talk about Lily Rose. Um, it goes into politics about Donald Trump. Uh, so it's a lot, it's, it, it's very, I guess, they give you great suggestions, which is, you know, which is great. It doesn't have, you know, you're very well informed. It doesn't just give you crime news. Um, and I think, I, I think it's great. You know, similar with uh, Washington Post. Uh, they'll have their uh, photo galleries. It's very multimedia based, and I think it's great. Uh, but like I was saying, the one problem I do have with the Huffington Post is when you scroll all the way down here, this is what I'm talking about, you know, as your, you know, as your multimedia, press conferences, just like any reputable source. This is what is weird about Huffington It's very easy to get distracted when you're on this website. Um, you know, you'll have these weird things, you know, perfectly timed photos that were taken all over the years over the internet, rare photos taken. So this is a little bit of an information overload. I think it's a bit irrelevant. I don't, I think it's, you know, I think it's sponsors or from a website or something like that, promoted by Bower World. So we'll check this out, you know, this is what I usually do uh, when I go off uh, websites. I look at these, I look at these, you know, random photo galleries. That, that is creepy. What is this? Insane Asylum images? These are videos from insane asylums. You know, I'll begin the slideshow if I want to take a little break. If I'm doing research for school, um, I'll find these links from the Huffington Post, and you know, sometimes I'll just get distracted. So it's a little bit of an overwhelming experience. So that's a little weird. Um, yeah, this is this is enough for me right now. I think it's enough for you guys too. Um, yeah, but uh, last but not least, I think it's very important, especially in the world of journalism. I think it's very important to ask questions. So you'll see. This conspiracy theory thing over here. This is uh, beforeitsnews.com. Now, I don't want you guys to think that I'm this crazy truther or whatever. You know, I think it's just important to ask questions because sometimes 
questions need to be asked. You know, some of the world's greatest problems, you know, think about Albert Einstein and theory of relativity or like, uh, what was his name? Um, well, you know, how Copernicus thought that, you know, the sun revolved around the world. You know, if nobody questioned Copernicus's theory, we would still believe that we are we are the center of the universe. So I think it's always important to ask questions, okay? That's just my opinion. Same thing with, you know, Galileo and the moons around Jupiter and, you know, and especially in the astronomy standpoint, since we were talking about that in the, in the professor's lecture. But, you know, flat earthers, you know, um, it's another one of Robin Williams, Illuminati. It's very just interesting. And sometimes you got, you know, you have your little search bar up here, which is great. So I'll pull up, you know, I'll pull up a random news story. Um, let's see. Uh, conservative revolt is brewing inside of the Vatican. So I'll type in here, I'll say um, Vatican, type it in. And I think it's powered by Google. So, you know, from May 2015, September 2014, you know, just something relevant. Uh, we'll, let's go May 20th. You'll be floored by what the Vatican's planning. And sometimes they, they, they present you with some pretty interesting stuff that, you know, you'll have to look deep in the internet as far as like news sources is concerned. So sometimes they'll, you know, like sometimes they have these religious references or something. But, you know, other times, can't find a story in particular right now. You know, they have these, like, videos, which is pretty cool. You know, same thing with the multimedia interface. Like I said, I don't want you guys thinking that I'm a truth or anything. I just think it's interesting because sometimes they have, you know, they post things on here from, you know, news sources that I would never read, ever, you know. Um, Televisa, uh, the exact composition of the intelligence of the data is up for discussion, the sources said, but Kerry's plan recommended a coalition that includes the Vatican together with a group of Muslim countries such as Turkey. So, you know, you could click and it brings you. Here. So it'll bring you to different sources and sometimes, and they're, you know, for the most part, reputable sources. Sometimes they'll redirect you to like uh, Wall Street Journal, New York Times. It's, uh, it's pretty interesting. So, you know, that's, it's mostly for fun, but, you know, I figured I'd add a fourth one in there. But for the main, po for the main, mainly I use Washington Post, ESPN for sports, Huffington Post, and I double check everything with Google. So that's how I use my internet. Like I said, I do not use social media, so I have to do my own research on everything. But pretty much my main base is Washington Post. Uh, thank you very much, and I can't wait to hear how you guys use the internet and gather your information, and I'm very excited. Thank you.